Hello everyone, I'm Shawnee Turner, Interpretive Learning Director at the Contemporary Arts Center. Thank you so much for joining us for our first Sunday Conversations program. Today we are joined by uh, Marc Dijon, who is a very well-known and liked local artist. Uh, I appreciate any questions you want to put into the live stream. Uh, I may hold them off to the end, and I can't promise that I'll get to all of them, but we're definitely going to try to incorporate them. So once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, Mark, thank you for being our first guinea pig. <laughs> so great. Um, so today uh, we kind of just want to have a com conversation about uh, your exhibition that you had at the CAC, but also kind of what you've been doing since then. and. Uh, kind of about how this coronavirus thing has affected your life and, and your yeah. thoughts on that. Um, but I want to start off with your exhibition from 2018 called The Swing House. Can you tell us a little bit about how that came to be about? Um, with uh, Stephen Meticcio, uh, mm -hmm. being a man of the town, he was very active in the art, arts community. Um, you know, we started a dialogue and there was a shift in the schedule at uh, the CAC. Um, and he knew that uh, the stairs of the swing house, which were presented horizontally at the swing house, um, they needed room to breathe. And the CAC always felt like the right space for it. And um, I think he just heard that and he felt it. And when a moment came up where there was a shift in the schedule, Initially, it was going to be for a small period, and things expanded from there. Um, so that's how it kind of started. And uh, I was uh, just, it's a dream to come true to be able to put forth uh, uh, such a focused and intense uh, uh, effort uh, with a uh, current dream to be able to have a show at the CAC. Wonderful. So I have some images that I'm going to show from the exhibition out of the swing house. But before we do that, I'm curious about some of the influences that you've had on your on your work, uh, because there are some things that I definitely see as an art historian. But I'm I'm wondering what uh, what you have to say about that first. Um, my influences, um, I, you know, there's a lot of references I have. I've always felt like the house was my medium. Um, like paint is to a painter or whatever a sculptor would use. Um, a house is my medium, but it's also a, a very personal vehicle. So in some ways it's very, very autobiographical. Um, so I use the house as a metaphor as my body. Um, and I would say as a metaphor for time, for relationships, the meaning of relationships. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I use a circle squares, it's just like the most reduced expressions or shapes, um, kind of like a male, female. Um, um, I use, and I would say I have a seductive relationship with old houses. Um, I find the patina that they present is something that just resonates with me as a person. Um, they have a story to tell. Uh, sometimes I tell it, um, with the swing house, it's very much being told. Uh, with the history on the walls in my house next door to stair house and i'm sure we'll be able to talk about it uh the, the that history is not as important but i would say the vehicle of the house being old uh it gives me a, i would say a very natural uh, landscape for me to work in i think we will go over to some of the images a lot of what you were saying um i feel like resonates with some of my thoughts on the types of things that you focus on. And we'll go ahead and bring up this first image of, well, actually both the swing house both and house. the stair house. Yeah. Yes, uh, the swing house is the blue house in the center and the stair house is that mauve colored building off to yeah. uh, <laughs> our right. And it's really quite red when you see it in person. Yeah. And this is, this is something that's great is that these buildings were uh, both of my kind of purchased about the same time. At the time, I was kind of considering calling them the blue house and the red house. Uh, <laughs> because I, I didn't want to like tie them down to one specific 
idea or a theme because it was still developing. Um, but they're on the street that I live on, uh, mm -hmm. and they're, they're right across from where, where I live. Um, yeah. And in many ways, I'm less interested on what the house is on the outside than what it is on the inside. Um, actually, I like the idea that they're kind of innocuous, that you actually can't tell that there's something going on on the inside when you drive down the street. Yeah. I like that idea. Um, I yeah, want to take a small tangent here. You you mentioned that the houses are on the same street that you live on, mm -hmm. and I know where that is, but would you like to let everyone know what neighborhood this is? Yeah, Camp Washington, which is uh, about three miles north of dead center downtown. Um, it's a very industrial place where uh, the neighborhood is mixed into that industry, but it's very limited. Um, it's a it's kind of a long island shape, uh, Camp Washington, four to five blocks uh, wide by 20 blocks long. Um, big train yard to the west, highway to the, uh, to the east. Um, Camp Washington, Chile, very famous. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, so that's definitely a reference. Um, right now, it's also being very developed as a art community uh, with some great um, uh, galleries and some uh, recent coffee houses and definitely a lot of activity. So, and, and uh, you, should I talk a little bit about your relationship with my street? You know, you can uh, talk about it. Sure. But yeah, so, uh, so Shawnee is very versed with uh, my street because um, this is a house that her mom owned um, prior to my purchase. So she was very well, um, very knowledgeable about the house. And we had a lovely discussion discovery of this uh, connection once I already had the show at the CAC in progress. So it's been wonderful uh, working with Shawnee and having this, I would say, very deep connection um, with my first, I would say, grand art house. So, and oh, go yeah, ahead. So, yeah, just to go back to a little bit about the history of the street, there's 10 houses total. My mom bought a warehouse in uh, 1980. Um, when I was 14 years old, I started helping her here, uh, working on the house, the building. So I would say I started my uh, career with the medium I'd work with as an artist here on the street. I ended up buying the house or warehouse uh, for my mom in 2005. And since then, I bought six of the 10 houses. And I would say I'm in the process of uh, making this street my street <laughs> in the best of ways. So. I think that's a really wonderful goal. So I, I'll kind of add a little bit to your story. It's, um, it's interesting because we met in December of 2017 when yeah. you had some open houses for the swing right. house prior right. to the exhibition opening. And I actually, I had known obviously about the exhibition working at the Contemporary Arts Center, but had never really put two and two together until I saw our Facebook invitation. And this is the image actually that I saw uh, in that invitation and I saw the address. And when I saw the address, I, I was kind of dumbfounded because I thought, no, no, that's not the right address. <laughs> and then upon looking at this image, I, I recognized the backsplash by the window on the, on the middle floor. Kitchen. And it, it, was, it was her kitchen, yes. Now I, I never lived there but uh, my sisters did and obviously um, visiting her over the years became very well acquainted with the house. And after she passed in 2010, um, unfortunately the house went into uh, some pretty bad disrepair. And uh, I know I had a lot of emotional feelings about it and it was really hard for me to come visit you that day. <laughs> um, but as you know, you know, since then there's been a lot of, uh, great conversations between us and uh, the the work that you've done in this house and honestly the work you've done in Camp Washington you know really kind of stepping up and being an activist in you know what was your neighborhood growing up for part of your life um, has been a really great healing moment yeah it's beautiful I love it yeah it is it's really great um, it's fun to take people here too and and have share stories with them, which is always good. Yeah, it's uh, lovely to have your sisters uh, 
one recent open house, another one of your sisters came to visit and catch up on the place. So it's always special oh, when that happens. That's great. Um, I'll kind of jump back to some of the, mm -hmm. the influences that I saw really when you had the show and um, maybe ask you to expound upon those a couple of things. Um, one of the things that really struck me was that idea of the passage of time and kind of uncovering histories, almost like an archeologist. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about why that became important, particularly at the swing house? Um, yeah, it's, um, you know, when I had the original idea 30 years ago, I couldn't say exactly, I couldn't speak about the idea, but I felt it. I knew it was something I wanted to do and in time, words come to me as many artists about what their work's about. Um, so I knew uh, my history with wanting to do this project was really me going downtown and going into these old buildings and seeing that history, those layers of people living there and just really connecting to the story of the house and uh, the history, the lives that lived in that house. So I, I really saw the swing as a pendulum, like a clock. Um, and that pendulum was a timepiece um, that would, uh, would, would you would travel through, uh, contemplate, if you will, uh, the different stories of the different tenants, different craftspeople that were all in the house uh, since in its inception. So uh, the, the layers are peeled back uh, as far back as the original brick layers, uh, plasterers, uh, carpenters, um, to some of the earliest choices, to um, the choices I made when I found that when I got the house. I'm browsing um, through some of the images yeah. that we that we have, um, it, including. It's a great one of, to talk about. Yeah. So this is going to tie very much into my next project, the stair house, um, but. Uh, Walter um, was your stepfather and he was yes. a house painter um, and he had hundreds of cans of paint in the basement of the thing. <laughs> and I, uh, you know, as, I, as an archaeologist, really, as I go through um, cleaning out a house, you know, I get rid of a lot of stuff, but I also keep a lot of stuff and I'll just kind of sit on it and it'll incubate in my brain. So I had these cans of paint that had dried up and I saved them. And um, so they were anywhere from an inch uh, to three inches thick where uh, like a half a can of paint would have shrunk back. And, and I mounted these and they floated um, off the wall in the basement. And I used that as an inspiration for the stair house. Um, the size is the same. Um, I, I ended up making uh, cores in the, stair house, the house next door, uh, that are six inches wide, which is essentially the size of a paint can. Um, and um, I essentially, because it is a stair house, I perforated in a very particular pattern uh, both sides of the stair walls, the walls that surround the stairs, yeah, right there. So that, that um, uh, there's those two walls that are next to the stairs and on both sides of each of those two walls, I cut through with a, a six inch hole saw and I saved all these uh, plugs. And the only piece at the uh, CAC show that was not part of the, uh, the swing house was that collection, as you see right here, in the background is a collection of the circles from the, from the uh, stair house. So it was really like the swing house show at the CAC was telling the story of uh, the swing house. It was also referencing my next project, which only started in earnest uh, this fall in October. So the previous photo with all the cores that you saw, that was the way the house was for two years. Uh, suspended, um, you know, having this beautiful moment uh, pre my work on it. So now I'm in the process and it'll probably be another two and a half, three years before it's done. So, so this yeah. is another example of the kind of archeological work that you've done in the house. 
And this is a great piece for you to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is. So you were you were really wonderful after we made these discoveries of uh, my history, and uh, especially after knowing some of the um, really, I guess, pain uh, of knowing what happened to the house and the things that were in it um, after she passed away. But the the images that everyone can see here, these are all artworks that were created by me and my sisters. So I can I can say I have that artwork in the Contemporary Art Center. <laughs> yeah, in a way. As, as children, these were uh, saved in a filing cabinet. So these are all yeah. childhood drawings. Yeah. Um, but especially I, because I thought you were so gracious in asking permission, uh, which was really wonderful. And this is actually one of my favorite memories of touring because while I would never tell anyone the history, you know, my personal connection to these uh, while I was touring, because I, I wanted to kind of, at the time, especially I was not ready to talk about it that much, but the way tour groups of all ages, children through adult responded particularly to this was so beautiful because it made them very reflective about, you know, the things that they make and the things that they give mm. and the importance of those objects and, and how important they are um, to the person they're giving them to, uh, but maybe not always themselves, which was interesting. I had a lot of parents begin nice. to reflect on, you know, why they kept things and came to the realization that they really kept them for themselves. It was a way to, stay attached to those happy memories, not so much for their children. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. no, it was, it, was, it was really wonderful. And you, yeah. you've also created the frames for these pieces from parts of the house, isn't that right? Yes, yes, all the wood from the swing house. Yeah. yeah. And you can, um, if anybody hadn't seen a show, um, all the artwork in the show floated off the walls. So that's why you see strange shadows in the background because um, all the photographs or uh, pictures, framed drawings are uh, floating off the wall by six inches. And that all corresponds back to the swing house, correct? Yes, yes. So the swing doesn't touch the ground. So in, in a way it floats. Um, and that's been a reference in, in the swing house itself with a lot of the decisions I made with the furniture and the way things are presented. They floated as well as uh, in the um, show at the CIC, this idea of um, otherness, if you will, uh, in terms of reality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stepping into a new realm. I think that that's also it really ties well into that idea of the layering of history too, because sometimes you can feel very suspended in a moment or a point in time. Um, and I, I wonder sometimes when I look at my own children, how they will remember certain events like, you know, the virus or, you know, even special trips that we took and how memories feel suspended in your mind sometimes. Yeah. Nice. So I know we, we talked about the staircase. Um, the reason the stair house is called the stair house is because of these stairs, right? Um, well, they'll be part of it. Uh, the yeah. stair house. <laughs> so the stair house um, uh, next to the swing house, it's another building built the same time. Um, when the stairs at the swing house were standing upright, um, yes, but this photograph, you see the swing house pre the removal of the stairs. And these stairs would ultimately be sectioned, um, cut and sectioned, then bolted together in place, and then ultimately unbolted and then reassembled horizontally. Um, this is really the inspiration for the stair house. Uh, people would come in there. Um, course they would hear that I'm calling this a swing house but they're like no you gotta leave the stairs <laughs> and I'm always like yeah yeah okay I know I know these are great they're wonderful but it's not about the stairs um but the house next door it, it had already started percolating uh, the idea that the that the stair house the red house would be the 
um, place where the stairs do stay in place. And what's going to be great about uh, the stair house is the stairs are in the center of the space. Um, I could tell a little bit about it. I don't want to say too much other okay. than um, um, I'm going to leave some surprises, but uh, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of contrast. There's going to be a lot of similarities uh, between the two houses, but a lot of contrast. Um, so the, a lot of the feeling that you get in being inside there is just going to be really different. It's going to be opened up uh, like the swing house, but it's going to, again, have so many different elements. And the original stairs, I'll say, because I'm not trying to reference the individuals that live there, um, everything's going to be either painted, uh, sanded, or uh, the walls themselves won't have that history revealed. Um, they'll be restored, be restored in a different way. Um, so the original stairs will exist in place, but they'll be very, I would say, finely presented. The swing house stairs will be brought back in. Um, mm -hmm. And I just over the last couple of days did some layout and um, it's going to be a little tricky for me to make the right placement, but but I, I'm, I've i got solutions. Um, so really with the stair house, uh, you'll have the original stairs. They'll be in place. They'll be accessible to walk up um, potentially. Um, and, uh, and then the swing house stairs will be horizontal. And then there's a back room that was ori originally the kitchen. And I'll have a floating staircase there. So, mm. so it'll be a house with three different staircases in it. Sounds magical. Yeah. And and you can so, yeah. Uh, we can we can transition if you if you'd like. The the next question I had was actually kind of wondering, you know, if the stair house will be similar to the swing house and that it will be used for an Airbnb or is yes. it going to just be an art house? Yeah, so I have two different uh, levels of art houses. Um, my first two, I would say, completed art houses, the Circle House and Square House. Um, they had art elements that were themed um, that were placed <laughs> into the um, house. and um, But the place itself was still very much a house that uh, a family or a couple could live in and have their day-to-day -day living experience. Uh, with the swing house and the stair house, it's, those are pieces the house accommodates the art theme itself. And they're kind of overwhelming in terms of um, affecting the space in a way that it just doesn't make sense for people to live in there for a prolonged period. And in many ways, um, the Airbnb model is kind of perfect in that I can have a audience of one or, or two people um, experience the swing house or stair house in the way that I feel like the house should be experienced um, kind of quietly by yourself, no distractions of a time frame or other people in a space. And the stay is, is short. You're not there for a long time. You're just there for a night or two. Um, so I'd say the magic that you experience coming into the place uh, still resonates with you by the time you leave. Um, so that's that's really kind of the way I understand it. I got two different levels of uh, houses that are um, art houses. Uh, the swing house, stair house are both in the same tier. And then the other ones, they go much faster, of course. They're generally fully renovated, but they don't have nearly the... Um, structural considerations uh, to deal with. So they take a lot, a lot longer. Yeah. So, so your most recent one is called the paint house, right? Yeah. So after uh, the CAC show, um, I purchased a house in uh, Northside, which is just a little further north from the na neighborhood I live in. It's also the neighborhood where the Square House is, and it's a neighborhood I've lived in personally and love. And I bought this house, I think really to get away from art for a moment. So I bought it with the idea that I was just going to fix a house and just, uh, uh, I don't want to use the word flip because it's got such a bad connotation, but <laughs> I'll go ahead and sell it. And I, I've done that 
uh, as part of my career, um, um, I would buy houses, fix them up and sell them. And so I was just going to return to that. And halfway through it, you know, it was just like the seed um, started to grow, uh, that there was a theme within the house. And at some point it's, it's, um, it's not resignation, but it's like, all right, this is not a, just a regular house. It's another art house. You got to respect that. And so then I just really embrace, I would say the theme that became clear and it becomes very much part of, of, um, my journey with the house. There are certain things that are familiar with my other two, um, I would say lower tier houses. Um, the circle and square house, the ceilings have circles or circle motif or using the circle um, as a as a means of creating shapes on the ceilings that I I make this white uh, shape and then let the wall color just roll up to that shape. Um, so a couple of things we're seeing on the uh, my left hand side of the computer, we're seeing the dining room and the two circles on the floor are tiles that were one in the bathroom upstairs and then the other were uh tiles that were in the entry hall both of them were linoleum slash vinyl contemporary peel and stick even with the uh, uh brick style tiles that were in the entry hall um so i made circles out of those um and then because I, this is the paint house. So there's a lot of different things that relate to the idea of paint. Um, uh, certainly the, the uh, biggest reason for me to call it the paint house was all different layers that were hidden behind um, uh, the colors that I came into. So the house was colored or painted, but they had many layers of paint that happened prior. So once I explored um, I was like, okay, I, this is just this is something I play with. So, and the picture picture on the right, uh, which is, has a, a barbell shape, um, you can just see it peeking here. Yeah, so that barbell shape, it's almost like a reflection. A barbell shape to me is talking about, I would say, a relationship, a connection to two objects being connected. Um, I use that in a lot of my pieces, my artwork. Um, it's also part of the swing house exhibition at the yes, same too. swing house in the uh, circle house in the square house. So it's been a theme that's been with me uh, since the early '90s when I was still in art school. Um, mm -hmm. and here I kind of used uh, the layers of paint. Of course, we can't get close up; you can't really see it. But <clears throat> I have um, all the layers of paint, which I use almost as a, 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 a the sanding I use as a, a means to be able to create like a reflection that created dimensionality to this barbell shape. And then you see, again, all these different layers and the white that's kind of the center of the reflection. And the reflection is working off the light in the center of the room, right? So it's reflecting the, not just the light of the, uh, yeah, it's reflecting the light of, of the room, uh, the light fixture in the room itself. And the uh, circles are the same shape or same diameter as that uh, light in the dining room or living room. <laughs> so, um, and then here on the left uh, in the hall, and this is the only picture, but really again, and, and I've got other pictures that really show it close, um, is this rectangular shape that again, I laid out a grid, a little bit like the CAC show where I made the eyeball shape. Um, I did a six by six grid. And then I go back into it and I, I use a um, body box shape, which is the reference to my body. It's seven by two ratio. And it, it can be any different size. It can be very small, which you see on the right-hand side on the wall is, um, two, uh, is an equal sign, which is two body box shapes uh, with a linoleum, piece of linoleum that I found underneath a framed in door. So there used to be a entry into the kitchen they blocked it off, put up plaster. When I removed that wall, it was just a three inch strip that was 30 inches wide. And so I was able to get this beautiful uh, 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 linoleum and create these two body boxes to create an equal sign. Hmm. And on the, on the here's floor- Here's a detail side, of that. Yeah, so yeah, here's a detail. So beautiful 1950s uh, linoleum. And then also, uh, if you go back again, so on the floor um, uh, um, between the hallway 
in the living room is a game board um, I found uh, uh, in the closets upstairs. There was this, what they call depression era rugs, which were essentially uh, rug shaped linoleum um, um, uh, 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 rugs, if you will, from the depression period. And they were just what uh, I would say uh, was a very affordable um, choice for uh, protecting the floor if you didn't have money for a rug and more practical. So they had those in the closets, they were cut up. Um, I just, I used a, a, the motif within it to be able to create a, a eight by eight um, checkerboard. And that checkerboard has uh, flowers and then also this, uh, the pattern um, that's within uh, these, these depression era uh, vinyl rugs, if you will. And that game board straddles two different rooms. It straddles the, the living room and the hallway itself. So it's almost like the rooms are playing a game here. So, and then uh, on the right-hand side, we see uh, the circle square theme I use a lot. So it's uh, square, circle, square. Um, and that square that's in the center, that's a, a recess. That's actually uh, 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 a dimension of my hand. So if I, if I put my hand I could, or fist, I can put it in there. That also references another piece we'll see in the next slide. Uh, but that piece itself, yep, there it is. Now if we go back again. <laughs> um, so that that right there is a column that's an eight inch by eight inch wood column that was in the basement. And there were three of them and they were very compromised and termites and water damage had caused the house to settle quite a bit. Um, so I removed these columns <coughs> um, and this was the only column that was salvageable. And I went ahead and mitered it and I put it together and then I uh, 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 created that square circle, square uh, shape. And it's right in the hallway. It's a pretty prominent piece, um, but yeah, it's nice. It's nice. And everything that you see here in the house is using material from the house. Um, so that's really important. Um, it might not be ideas that are exclusive to the house, but there generally are um, ideas that are exclusive to the house. So I have an art history question for you. Yeah. Um, so when you rent these out, how do you feel about the people who live in them uh, bringing their own art in? You know, like for instance, Frank Lloyd Wright was very controlling over his interiors. I'm wondering if you're a little bit more laid back than that. <laughs> uh, no, they can't bring anything into it. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, they—they, they, um, I'm very laid back as a person. Other than my uh, partner, she would say not. But <laughs> um, I'm, I'm kind of like figured you'd a, a, a stubborn tourist for sure. <laughs> uh, but I'm very accommodating in this arena, which is when people do rent for me, I'm I'm very forgiving um, uh, in terms of what they bring in. Um, I would say if they want to paint a wall, I would, there would have to be a discussion involved. Uh, fortunately, nobody's asked to paint a wall yet. So, um, no, I'm okay. You know, I understand okay. these houses as places for people to live in. They just bring their themselves into it. Um, so here, of course, the detail of the body box shape. And then back in the dining room, uh, we see uh, uh, another hand box series. So uh, from the swing house, I took the last that, were, that are in the plaster walls that hold the plaster material up are these wooden strips. I take those, uh, I collected only so much from the swing house. Um, anymore, I'm collecting everything that's practical. So um, from this house, the paint house, there was really only one wall that came out, which was the wall between the dining room and the kitchen. And I had exactly enough wood to be able to do a 64 uh, box, uh, so there's 64 boxes. Again, that references that game board. Um, so that's a, a real important number for me within my work. Um, 64, uh, 16 on center, which is a divisible number from 64, is very common in terms of layout for houses. Here, um, there's another little number play in that each one of those little boxes takes 64 cuts on a table saw to make. So... Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a perfect, um, yeah, I would say the piece itself is kind of complete in this way. And it's an ongoing series. So each of these 
these boxes are numbered sequentially. Uh, this is the third set. I made two sets from the swing house. Um, and then I made this house, this uh, set from the stair house. Uh, this is where I get tripped up. My houses start running <laughs> together. So this, this cube is from the paint house uh, using the um, lath from, from my renovation. They're kind of like children. You do that when you have yeah. kids too. You just call yeah. them the wrong yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My father was uh, famous for going through the whole list of, of brothers before he got to the one that finally was the real name, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna turn off our screen. I have a few more questions for you yeah. if you have time. For sure. Um, so I know we had a conversation the other day about how how this has changed. Yeah, uh, I should say that the quarantine and coronavirus has kind of changed your working. Um, and you said not a whole lot, but then there were other ways it, it did. Can you elaborate that for on that for our guests? Yes. Um, so as the quarantine was, um, you know, coming becoming more apparent that it was going to happen, um, I made a uh, um, forethought had a forethought to go ahead and buy uh, a lot of materials to keep me working with. Uh, the stair house, which is just across the street. Uh, so I've had to go out in a very limited fashion uh, in terms of getting more materials. I'm able to just kind of do my uh, project. So in, in some ways, my work hasn't changed. Uh, they describe it as essential, uh, lease construction, maybe not what I'm doing, but um, I'm across the street. I'm not really having, a, I would say, a face-to-face -face with people. Um, so I feel comfortable continuing my work. Um, and one of the things that it has affected me, of course, is uh, my my sphere of people I see is very limited. You know, it's pretty much just my uh, partner and, and stepdaughter. Um, so um, we're a family unit. And uh, so that's kind of who I see. Um, um, yeah. And then I would say my income stream has been affected by um, the, the uh, COVID um, pandemic that we're experiencing right now. So I have rental property um, that's expressed with uh, mostly artists that rent from me, um, but some other people um, and artists are very vulnerable. Um, but I also have uh, uh, the Airbnb with a swing house and that's been very flat since uh, this has all started, so. I wonder if you've reflected on some of the lessons we just as a world could take from from this experience. You're a pretty philosophical guy. I imagine I imagine you thought a little bit about it. Well, I think the slowing down, if we have the luxury of appreciating uh, the slowing down and maybe understanding what's important. I mean, I think that's probably the, the biggest thing. Ultimately, it's, it's friends, family, and uh, I would say meaningful memories, meaningful situations. So um, of course, it's easy to talk that way when I'm not hungry or um, having the threat of me being kicked out. Uh, those aren't where I'm at right now. So uh, and it's a good opportunity really to look out for uh, our um, fellow uh, citizens of this planet. So, you know, I really appreciate all the efforts that are going out to creating community, for sure. I see I that a lot. Yeah, I think I've I've established an, a newfound, not that I wasn't grateful before, but my gratitude has definitely increased in mm -hmm. the last couple of months. Right on, I'm yeah. Trying to pass that along as well. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm going to bring in um, a couple of the questions from our viewers today. Theo has a question for us, or for you. He wants to know, how do you maintain the houses as the art should be protected as is, or should it evolve through time? Um, that's a great question, Theo. Um, I do feel like they're pretty finite. Uh, the pieces, and I do wonder how time, how time would affect the houses. Um, you know, we wouldn't go ahead and 
or you know, I don't know, like use Mona Lisa. We wouldn't go ahead and change it because the the um, the, the tastes and styles are different right now. So in that way, um, I feel like the pieces are kind of fixed. Um, the references to me, um, somebody might say they're decorative. For me, I feel like they're they're complex choices and. You know, the the choice for me to reveal the history of the swing house, you know, that's that's um, non-negotiable. You know, you don't go in there and just paint a wall. Um, uh, and that way, I feel like they're more fixed. But, you know, I, I can't really say. I know that, you know, I have sold some houses that were themed, but they weren't finished. Um, and they have been changed. And um, I'm pretty ambivalent about the experience of that changing. Um, there's a sadness for sure to see, I would say my vision, uh, not one being fully realized um, because I you know, ended up selling the house pre-completion. Uh, um, uh, but I also understand that they can't be, um, um, I would say, uh, especially when you, like ones that you sell, I, I don't in some ways feel like I have the right to, to be able to say you have to leave it that way. But with the swing house, stair house, yeah, I kind of see them being fixed, really. I see them fixed like uh, any kind of artwork in the past, for sure. And that's that's actually one of the reasons I think why I, I um, leave the outside kind of as minimal as possible um, is because... I guess there's an opportunity to, to, I guess, maintain it because you will have to maintain it. Um, and the, there's going to be choices that have to happen that, um, that I, I don't really want to be involved in. Um, and in some ways, like I said earlier, I want them to be um, kind of just Camp Washington houses. So they blend in. Uh, but the, the insides are really, um, they're, they're pieces of art in my book. You know, they're, they're, every decision I made with the swing house was because of the swing. So it's not, they're not casual decisions. I think that one of the, the wonderful things about what you do for me um, as a previous art history teacher is that I felt like I always struggled with students to really help them understand that architecture is an art form because so many of them saw buildings as being functional and as much as you would, you know, take them on field, I, I would take field trips all the time. We would go to Frank Lloyd Wright houses and, you know, the Contemporary Art Center and really try to help explain that to them, that it really does inspire a feeling within you, very similar to a painting. You're really able to break down those, those walls between different art forms and allow people to see craft, you know, carpentry as art, allow people to see structures as art. And I think just coming from that perspective, I think you're incredibly successful. So thank you for, for that. And that kind of just, I think, outside the box thinking in the way that you create. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. So yeah, I guess always, with that, oh, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, somebody defined like art as, uh, um, you could define art as being non-functional. And I've always been <laughs> kind of intrigued um, by the definition and uh, how art does or doesn't fall within that definition, so. Well, we are over our time, but I kind of anticipated that anyway. But I wanna thank you so much for your time today, Mark. And I wanna for thank sure. everyone for joining us today. And I hope you come back and see us next week. Uh, same time, Facebook Live. Uh, thank you and you all have a, a great day. Take care. Take care.